recently fresh off uh, the Royal Challengers Bengaluru team, and the only sort of slam poetry I do is myself, Mr. Nags. I have a lot of duddo, RCB hired me, and that is very good though. That's the kind of poetry I write, right? Horrible. And then I get Nikhil Chennabar to make music for it and obviously feature the other cricketers from the team in the video. Um, I've been doing voices all my life, guys. This is the only thing I know how to do, right? Uh, hello, my name is Mr. Chako. You guys have heard the prank calls, right? If you've heard the prank calls, what else do I do? Hello, Salaam Asghar Balko. That's all I do. That's all I know how to do. I don't know how to do anything else. Uh, I'm just going to be taking you back in time, uh, you know, uh, with this story I'm going to be telling you right now. I went to a boarding school. Anybody went to a boarding school here? Very good. So our parents didn't like us. Okay. <laughs> no, but uh, why I went to a boarding school, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a backstory. So I don't come from one of those homes where, uh, you know, father was driving the car, mother was sitting beside him, sister and me sitting at the back with a golden retriever with its head outside, wind blowing and the dog's ears are going, you know. <laughs> we grew up in an environment where there were problems. <laughs> Shit loads of problems, right? So to kind of shield me away from whatever was happening at home, because my mum and dad, guys, have you seen Vince McMahon fight against Stone Cold Steve Austin? Have you guys seen WWE? Double the drama at home. So my mum had to shield me and she sent me away to a boarding school. And in boarding schools, guys, they hit you really hard. Huh? They hit you really hard. So uh, the guy you're seeing right now, Back in the day, yeah, I was, I mean, as, as whatever, you know, naughty as, or, you know, as, as crazy as I am today, I was just the same thing back then as well. Um, the only thing that we had in our boarding school was uh, classes in the morning. There was one games period for like an hour. And then after that, all of us did yoga, wearing a white kurta and a white pajama. There was nothing else to do. We got to watch TV every day for half an hour. And what did we get to watch on TV? Any guesses? No, I'm slightly more ahead than that. New you buggers would say Durdashan. No, I'm only 28. So we get, no, Shakti Manu says way before that. Yeah. So we got to watch NDTV, right? So we used to watch news because information is important. How many of you all read newspapers? Very good, important. You don't read newspapers? How do you uh, type app on mobile phone? You follow now what's happening in the world? Who retired just now? Who just said he doesn't want to be the, who's the governor of RBI? No, I'm asking, she, he doesn't care. He's like, ah, okay. Modi is in the world, so. Okay, so listen, anyways. So, um, so yeah, so uh, the only thing we got to do was that. So I had a lot of funny teachers, right? And they were from all parts of Karnataka. In fact, I met my chemistry teacher recently and he said, thank God, Pa, you are, uh, picked my uh, English and not the chemistry. <laughs> we used to have like half an hour, 45 minute long classes in that sort of English, you know. Very weird people. One of them, for example, was this karate guy. And all he did all the time was just, he'd come in front of you and do this. <laughs> That's all he'd do. And he'd start breathing and he was very good at this whole kung fu thing, okay? Kung fu, karate, whatever the hell that is. So once he was sitting together in a room, just a back story about this dude. He was sitting together in a room and one of my classmates uh, was talking about another guy who was nicknamed Banda. We just call him Banda. So uh, we were talking about him and this guy said, hey, on Boli Maga Banda, he said. In Kannada, the literal translation is the Boli Maga has come. Enter Kung Fu Man. And he mistook that Boli Maga to be himself. And all of us were on the floor after that with some serious Kung Fu cakes, okay? So I had very weird teachers. Now my classmates, wonderful set of people. Uh, the boys' hostel is always a fun place to be at. There's a lot of action there in the sense not the... <laughs> Not that action, but there's just a lot of things happening there, right? It's the boys' hostel. People are doing things they shouldn't be doing. A lot of things. Uh, so one uh, evening, I remember sitting with my classmates and uh, imitating all the teachers. That's all I knew how to do, right? Through school, I'd imitate them. I'd pick mannerisms like that. My mother and sister seconded. They're here. That's all I did as a child. I just picked mannerisms and gave it back in the exact same manner, and that would make people laugh. Everybody had a great time. We said goodnight to each other. I went back to my room and I was on my bed. And at about 11 o'clock, Kung Fu Man enters. <laughs> All right? And in school, if a teacher comes to your room after 10 o'clock in the night, you've done some shit. You've done something wrong. So he tells me, come out. So I said, sir, what did I do? And my heart's beating really fast. 
So I'm like, I don't know what I did, sir. He's like, just come out with me. He takes me into the corridor. There's a window at the back. Very, uh, you know, the corridor was this. It, it was almost like this narrow and this long, right? So I go there, and it's just me and him. And then two other teachers enter from behind. And they ask me, what did you do? And I'm like, I don't know what I did. I get one slap. Very hard. And immediately, I had tears in my eyes. Like, immediately. And to think of it, I was the same guy who was making people laugh about five hours before that. The second teacher asks me, Games time only in yen martai de. I said, sir, I don't know what I did. A kick. And I'm down on the floor now. The third teacher, I will tell you the school's name. Yeah, We had corporal punishment back in the day. That time you couldn't go and say, you can't hit me and all that. Huh? We grew up with that period where we used to get hit. The third kick again, and now I'm on the floor and I'm crying. And I'm like, I don't know what I did. He calls my classmates. These people I was sitting and, you know, cracking these jokes with. They come in the front and they pull a recorder out. And they play the clip and it's me imitating all these teachers. Now, little did I know that my classmates would get together and beat me up as well. I was getting beaten up on the floor there with people telling me, all you will ever do is bloody imitate people. Is it even of any use to the world or to you? And I was down there and believe you me, at that point, I really didn't know that I'd grow up one day to do the same bloody thing. And today, I get paid to do that same stuff, man. Very strange, right? Now, I'm just going to be leaving you with a couple of things, guys. Number one, if you are in college, if you're in school, and if you're sitting in this audience, never be an asshole to someone. Never. Because you never know that same child who's with you and that same child that you bully might just end up you know, becoming the next Steve Jobs. And at that point, you won't get any free Apple iPhones or one of those things, right? So just be nice to people, number one. Uh, number two, guys. At that point when I was getting kicked, I really didn't know that it would shape me and my future or my career or the person that I am. Because at that point, the only thing that I said to myself when I went back missing my mother, I grew up just with her and she's everything. I still remember my first ever parent-teacher visit at uh, boarding school. My mother brought two bags. Guess what the bags had? Chocolates. That's it. Just I was a very fat child. She just brought chocolates and said, Beta, eat. Eat your heart's content. And that night, I could not stop thinking of my mother. And I cried. I literally cried. I had the pillow like in my mouth because I didn't want to you know, disturb the others around me. I cried a lot. And the only thing I said to myself was, you know what? One day, I'm going to shape myself up and I'm going to do what I do so well that the world is going to know me. Right now, Bengaluru does. And I'm sure the world will know me soon. Thank you very much. Yeah.